We have two stretch oscillators available in Falcon, the basic stretch oscillator and the higher quality Urchem stretch oscillator. The stretch oscillators will allow us to bring in an audio sample and play back that sample at higher or lower pitches without changing its playback speed. Now by default, when we bring an audio sample into Falcon and load this into the mapping editor, we are gonna be taken to the basic sample oscillator. And here with this mode, when I trigger at the root key of C3, we hear our sample at its original pitch. And then as I play up, the speed of the sample is also going to speed up if I play lower. Okay, it's gonna slow down. Now the stretch oscillators help us avoid that change in the timing of our audio sample. Let's then come up to the sample tab here and right click and begin with the basic stretch oscillator and take a look at how that works. I'll expand that out. And then if I trigger at the root key C3, okay, we can hear our uh, sample in its original pitch and speed. If I trigger higher, or lower. Okay, you can hear that even though we are changing the pitch, we are keeping a consistent speed for that original sample or the speed that the original sample has. Of course, as we move further away from the root note, the more quality that we lose, particularly with higher pitches because the oscillator needs to create information in order to keep the timing in those higher notes. Whereas at lower pitches, information is gonna be dropped. But this is also why we have the Urcam stretch oscillator, which will give us an even higher quality result. The trade-off is in CPU usage. And before we go on to take a look at the parameters here in the stretch oscillator, let's, I'm gonna trigger a higher note, and let's just listen to the quality in the basic stretch oscillator. Let me raise that up a bit. Okay, and then quickly I'm gonna to switch to the Urchem stretch and play that same note. Okay, so you can hear there's a significant difference in the quality between these two, but again, you're gonna have the trade-off of CPU use. And we are back on the basic stretch. Actually, no, we're not. Okay, so the first parameter that we have is sample start. And we, if you've seen any of the other tutorials on the oscillators within Falcon, then you know that this is basically going to determine where playback begins of your audio sample at the default of 0%, it's gonna begin at our start marker. If, and this is in relation to our start marker as well. So if we were to move the start marker in, at 0%, it's gonna begin there. If I were to change this to 50%, then we should begin halfway between our start and our end marker. So that's pretty straightforward. I will alt click to take that back to the default. And then next we have legato and this is not going to be active by default, but when we activate that, if we trigger a, a different key during the playback, then that key will continue to be played wherever our cursor is. So if I trigger, our new key that I press continues where our cursor is. Whereas if we have that disengaged and I press and then do another key, we start, we are re-triggered at the very beginning of our sample here. So that's what that legato is. Next we have the sample section. And in the sample section, we have some additional controls to determine how our sample will play back in relation to Falcon or your DAW's tempo. If Falcon is synced to your DAW's tempo. For this, I'll actually bring in a different sample. Let's trigger this at the root note to hear how it sounds in its original state. 
Okay, now if I were to play this back within our browser, we can hear that that's the speed of the original file. So we also see here that it's 130 BPM. So what we could do is double click in this field and put in 130. And this is gonna tell Falcon what the speed of this file is. So if we make any changes, if we leave this synced to the tempo here, then if we adjust this tempo or if you're synced to your DAW, I'm not running Falcon in a DAW at the moment, but if you make any changes in your DAW or Falcon, then it's gonna know how to adjust this here. So if we were to drop this down to 80 beats per minute, I'll press enter and then re-trigger. If I change this to 180, Okay, and that's because we have the sync set to tempo. If we turn that off, then it's gonna play back at its original BPM of 130. Let's go ahead and put that back on tempo. And here we have a tempo factor and tempo fine. With tempo factor, we can adjust the playback speed of our audio sample down to a quarter of the speed or four times faster than the tempo that we are using. So let's, let's take that down to a quarter. And then up to four times faster. I will alt click to take that back to the default of one. We then have a fine adjustment area for the playback speed. And we're gonna change this from adding 50 to minus 50%. In the analysis section, we have a solo mode and grain size and sensitivity. These parameters can potentially help you achieve a better quality transposition of your sample. If you are working with a sample that has a solo instrument, you can try turning the solo mode on. If your sample is polyphonic, then you'll probably want to leave this set to off, which is the default. For grain size and sensitivity, you can experiment with these different values here to see if you can achieve a better sound. Grain size can be adjusted between 10 and 100 milliseconds. I'll alt click to take that back. And then our sensitivity can be adjusted from 0.10 to 10. Now, if I re-trigger our sample, with the current settings. And then let's take these all the way down. There's not much of a difference with this audio sample. Let's take this all the way up. Okay, let's come back to our piano. Drop that in there with the settings all the way up. And then let's take these all the way down and see what the difference is going to be. Okay, so that definitely uh, makes a big difference with this particular sample. So again, you can see that taking these all the way down is going to lower the quality for this particular sample. So you would just want to experiment and see if they can help you out in achieving a higher quality. All right, let's move on to take a look at the Urcam Stretch Oscillator. We'll right click on the tab up above and come to Urcam Stretch. Let's expand that out. Now, as I mentioned earlier, and as we heard, this is gonna give you a higher quality of audio processing with your uh, transposition of your samples that you use with this. And we also have a few different controls within our parameter section below here. First, we have a speed control, and this is actually gonna be pretty CPU hungry. It's made my system choke a little bit, so I'm not sure. I don't think I'm probably gonna, well, let's go ahead and give it a shot. Just keep in mind with the uh, Urcam granular and multigranular, when we use the speed controls, those are not as hungry as the one here within the stretch. This is, there's just a lot of processing and calculations going on. And I'm also using Windows Audio in order to capture the audio in my screen capture program. 
So I'm not using an audio interface with ASIO drivers, which would help to kind of mitigate some of the processing and would not be as taxing. But if I go ahead and trigger at our root, and then if I take the speed down, okay, we can hear that. Okay, and the part of the reason why this is so intense on the processor is because Falcon is trying to keep our audio sample as similar as possible to the original sample at its root note, whereas with the granular and multigranular, it's it's not trying to do that. So that's a lot of processing for this to take on. But we can take this all the way down to a standstill on a single grain. We could take it all the way up to 10 times faster, but I will alt click to take that back to the one default setting. We have the familiar start parameter. Again, putting that at 50 is gonna begin playback at the center of our audio sample. We have a sample section and we've already covered how these parameters work within the basic stretch oscillator. Next, we have analysis. The window parameter here is going to set the size of the sampling window for the grains created for our audio sample. And the padding is gonna allow us to add oversampling if we'd like. By default, this is gonna be set to one or no oversampling, but we do have the option of setting this to two or four times. Just be careful with this one. You know, as is, the ERCAM stretch is gonna be processor intensive, but even with if you turn the oversampling on, it's going to be even more so. And the same with the overlap. This is going to add additional processing. And the overlap determines the amount of overlap of our grains. And we can set this with a range of 3 all the way up to 8. All right, remix. Within our remix section, we have sign, noise, and transient controls. And if we activate the remix section, it will allow us to set the levels for each of these qualities of our audio sample. And we'll just go ahead and give a listen to what this actually sounds like. Sign is actually gonna adjust the harmonics within our audio sample. So let me play back. So we've cut the harmonics and we're only hearing noise and transient information for our audio sample. Let's take that all the way up and let's take these down so we can really hear what we are adjusting. Okay, so the harmonics of our audio sample. And then next we have noise. Let's just take that all the way up. And the sign down, our transient is down. And then we have transient. Okay, so if you activate Remix, then this is going to allow us to adjust the levels of these three qualities for our samples. Let's go ahead and turn that off. And then finishing up, we have an options section. By default, the transients is going to be on, and I probably don't even need to have this on for this piano sample. This is gonna be more useful for achieving a better quality for rhythmic samples. So we could, let's turn that off. I'm not hearing much of a difference with that on or off. We next have envelope and you can experiment with this setting if you are having issues with artifacts in your pitch for your audio sample. We then have stereo and the manual states for this uh, that this setting phase locks between two between stereo channels. I'm not ex exactly sure what that means, but that's what the manual states for that. We then have shape, and this setting may help you achieve a better quality with monophonic sounds. And finally, we have legato. Now, with this, we had the exact same setting within the basic stretch oscillator. It's 
this is just in a different location. So with this off, when I re-trigger, we start from the beginning of our sample. And as you can guess, with this on, when we re-trigger, we start wherever the playback cursor is at. All right, and so that covers everything within our Urcam stretch oscillator, and I will see you in the next tutorial.